Dear, today we will be uh, talking about anti-Parkinsonism drugs and the mechanism underlying Parkinsonism. You are quite familiar with what is Parkinsonism. So, what is Parkinsonism? You know, at the level of central nervous system, this is brain, and this is the right hemisphere and the left hemisphere. And what is important to understand is that there is a balance between the excitatory neuron and the inhibitory neuron, or the or what you can say excitatory neurons and the uh, inhibitory neuron, inhibitory nerves. This is very important to understand. It means that if a nerve body, the cell body is here, it is going to innervate a particular skeletal muscles passing through different uh, mechanisms. So what is important? Important is that there are in between interneurons and some interneurons may be inhibitory and some of them are maybe working as uh, uh, modulatory. You see. So what is important? Important is that there is a balance between the excitatory nerves and a balance between the inhibitory nerves. This is very important, especially in other central nervous system disorders. But in case of Parkinsonism, you see, there is a, usually there is a balance between dopaminergic, dopaminergic nerve and cholinergic nerves. Cholinergic nerves. So this balance is usually affected adversely affected. How it is affected? It is affected as such that 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 the 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 dopaminergic activities are decreased and once the dopaminergic activities are decreased so it means cholinergic is predominant. And as we said that in case of skeletal muscles you see here the neurotransmitter is acetylcholine. Remember this is peripheral nervous system and here at the level of central nervous system is acetylcholine as interneuron and excitatory nerves. So they are working together in coordinations. Now what happened in Parkinsonism that the cholinergic activity is predominant, meaning that it, once it is innervating the skeletal muscle, so what happens? There will be uh, uh, tardive dyskinesia, there will be dyskinesia, dyskinesia, and tremors, tremors are there. Remember these tremors are not point tremors, they are not point tremors as it happens in hypothyroidism. And there is a, if the muscles of the uh, deglutations, what you can say of the, that esophagus are affected, then maybe dysphagia, you see, and this dysphagia, and there may be uncoordinated movement, uncoordinated uh, movements, and then uncoordinated movements, you see, uh, will create problem for you people. So, in nutshell, if you ask this patient to, this is a straight line, and tell the patient, start from here, you see, and put one foot here, one foot here, right, left, right, left, so it will be difficult for him to go straight. First there will be dyskinesia, there will be dyskinesia and this dyskinesia uh, is followed by by uh, a zigzag pathway you see. So it will be very difficult for uh, to maintain a straight line. This is very important in the differential diagnosis. Beside tremors, uh, irregular movements, involuntary movements and particularly there is slowness in the initiation of this walking. So, so, so in a nutshell, uh, how, what are the symptoms? The symptoms are tremors, muscle rigidity, bradykinesia, tardive dyskinesia, slowness in the initiation of carrying out of voluntary movements. Uh, if this condition is very progressive and advanced, so you see the muscles uh, of esophagus, if they are affected, then this dysphagia. Uh, though dysphagia is a diff different, is, is in a very extreme and advanced case, dysphagia cannot be considered only for the Parkinson's disease. 
uh, what is important? Important is that we call autonomic nervous system, and once we have talked about that, there is tyrosine, and tyrosine has been uptaken into the nerve uh, endings, and this tyrosine is now here, and it is converted into norepinephrine, and this norepinephrine is now in the, then in the vesicle norepinephrine. So once stimuli of sufficient amplitude come, so there is post synaptic receptors, maybe beta one, adrenergic, maybe alpha one, and then remember this is alpha two presynaptic receptor, and this norepinephrine comes here, and it may. So here it is having an inhibitory effect, and this is exocytosis phenomena is there. This is exocytosis. Exocytosis. This exocytosis is that release the norepinephrine here, and this norepinephrine then comes here for these receptors. And it depends upon the type, the postsynaptic receptor. For example, in the heart, there is beta-1 receptors. So this, 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 this mechanism is very important to understand the adverse effects. So coming back to the point, what happens in a Parkinsonism? Dopaminergic activity is uh, decrease. And this tyrosine is converted into dopamine here, you see. So if it is converted into dopamine, and then dopamine is converted into norepinephrine, this is a technical point to remember. So what is important? Important for us that let we regulate, let we regulate this conversion into the dopamine and, and 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 give certain dopaminergic drugs. As dopaminergic are less or decrease, and uh, there is cholinergic activity is increased, so the treatment strategy is give dopaminergic drugs. So give dopaminergic drugs. Dopaminergic drugs are prescribed. Number first. Second is give anticholinergic drugs. And this anticholinergic drugs uh, will decrease this the hyperactivity of this acetylcholine. This is the treatment strategy. Now, uh, but this is not so simple. For example, for anti-Parkinsonism drugs are, you see, uh, anti-Parkinsonism drugs are uh, like levodopa and carbidopa. Levodopa and carbidopa, you see. So these are anti-Parkinsonism drugs. So when these drugs are given, they are passed, then it's passing through this small intestine, you see, and these, they are dopa decarboxylase. So these drugs comes, and this dopamine, dopaminergic drug is then passing through this, it is then passing through the liver system, and, and then it reaches the general circulation of the blood. What is important? Important is that in the cells of this uh, epithelial cells, it is oxidized, and once it is oxidized, so you have two drugs to inhibit uh, the metabolism inside this particular, uh, what you can say, the lumen or the intestine of, of the intestine. So carbidopa is a drug. Carbidopa is a drug. Carbidopa, dopa is a drug that will inhibit the metabolism at the level of this intestine. So there is a dopa, dopa plus carbidopa combination. What the dopa does, the dopa come here and it is converted, it is uptaken into the uh, nerve ending and it is converted then into dopamine. So what is important? Important is that this dopamine then comes here and converted in, in the, into a, either into a norepinephrine or in the dopaminergic nerve. In the dopaminergic nerve, you see, if this nerve is dopaminergic, so this dopa come, this dopa comes here, and it is increasing the level of dopamine, and this dopamine then gives the postsynaptic response. What important is to understand that once you give carbidopa. So then, then the metabolism of the do, dopamine or the dopa drug, which is in fact levorotatory drug, L-dopa, is decreased. 
So the dose required in the presence of carbidopa is one over fifth of the dose of uh, one over fifth dose of um, dopa. This is a technical point, and carbidopa is going to inhibit the metabolism here at the level of at the level of the lumen of the small intestine. Consequently, sufficient amount of of of, of, of drug will reach the general circulation, and this the plasma level is maintained. So what is important? Important is that the pharmacokinetics of, of the, do, uh, the dopamine is maintained in the presence of levodopa as the min, min, maximum effective concentration in AC and the MAC, you see, of the drug is, is, is maintained. So what is important? Important is that combined with the dopa, uh, with the levodopa, combine the carbidopa, give anticholinergic drugs to to decrease the muscular rigidity and the and the and the and the cholinergic activity that usually happens. I hope now you understand that what is what are the mechanisms and how what is the drug therapy uh, uh, um, protocols particularly what is the treatment strategy so far, the mechanism underlying Parkinson's drugs are involved. Thank you.